Chances of reestablishing a nuclear deal with Iran seem to be fading. Billionaires will have a big say in Illinois' race for governor. And Iowa joins the list of red states making a commitment to border security. We'll cover that this morning with former Scott County Democratic Party Chair Alicia Gaiman and former Rock Island County Republican Party Chair Bill Bloom. Nice to see you both as always. Let's get right to it. Starting with Iowa's involvement in immigration enforcement, Governor Kim Reynolds made the announcement a little more than a week ago that Iowa will be among 25 states working together to help federal immigration enforcement along the border with Mexico. The group is called the American Governor's Border Strike Force. The goal is to stop crime coming from the southern border. The states will share intelligence and other information about investigations to keep drug traffickers, human traffickers, drug cartels, and other organizations from breaching the border into the United States. Reynolds says no taxpayer money will be spent. No officers from Iowa will be part of it. All the states involved have Republican governors. Now, if there's not taxpayer money or personnel, how much teeth does this have? Or is this just being political on this long-standing wedge issue? Alicia? Um, I think your later <laughs> explanation probably sums that up best. Um, especially, I, I think there's not the appetite, one, um, for us to get involved, especially in a border state when our border, you know, we're, we're very much the heartland of America because we're at the middle of America. Um, and that does have the benefits of not having to deal at the state level with border issues. And I think, you know, anything done in this is in this vein without putting um, uh, resources behind it is is definitely done for political reasons. There's no other ex explanation left for it, really. Um, so if it makes her feel better and no tax dollars are being used and taken away from Iowans, then, um, you know, it, it is what it is. And I don't know that it's going to really make an impact. Um, the larger thing that should be happening is a call for national immigration reform. And that really needs to continue to happen. I know some leaders nationally are calling for it and have been calling for it. It's been an ongoing crisis. And um, this is just yet another way um, of usurping the federal government and, and trying to find a solution to that problem. Bill, I'm sure you agree with the governor's move, but how much teeth does this really have? Um, well, I, I think anything we do to secure the border is, is, a, is a step in the right direction. I think the federal government's failing miserably in, in its obligation there. And, and the CDC uh, decision to uh, further open the border which is supposedly going to create uh, an inflow of two, two million plus uh, illegal people is uh, is even more reason to uh, pay attention to it. I think uh, you know how much teeth does it have? We'll have to wait and see what actually develops. I think I think any reinforcement of the of the uh, Rio Grand border is uh, is a, is a step in the right direction. I think it's a good thing to do. Let's move on to our next topic. Big money is behind the Illinois governor's race. We all know about Governor J.B. Pritzker and the billionaire status in his re-election bid. Fortune magazine puts his net worth at a billion dollars and already spent $125 million on his campaign for a second term. Three Republican candidates vying for their party's nomination to challenge Pritzker have backing by billionaires. Richard Irvin received $20 million in contributions from Ken Griffin. Griffin is the richest man in Illinois worth more than $26.5 billion. Another is Darren Bailey. Bailey picked up $2.5 million into Donations from Richard Uline. Uline is worth $4 billion. The other is Jesse Sullivan. He reported $5 million in support from Silicon Valley billionaire Chris Larson. Now, our colleagues at The Hill report this will be Illinois' third gubernatorial election in a row, where at least one candidate spends tens of millions of dollars on his own. What does it say that these races have gone from being, let's say, $20 million campaigns into spending more than $100 million? Bill? Uh, you know, it's... it's uh it, it 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 becomes a challenge for a candidate who can't raise money to uh, to get his message out and to effectively compete when you're when you're opposed by uh, by uh, opponents with uh, multiple millions of dollars and uh, billion dollar backing. Um, it's a it's a necessity given the nature of JD Pritzker and the, and the Democrats in Illinois that that Republicans are need that kind of horsepower in order to. Uh, Get their message out and, and buy the airwaves necessary. I think uh, I think Richard Irwin's above and beyond being being well funded. I think he's he's got a very compelling message that's resonating with a lot of Republicans. Um, I also think Paul Shoup is a good candidate, even though he's been he's had some challenges fund raising funds in a race that didn't have billionaires. He'd be a, he'd be a, a rival. Uh, he's still got a good ground game, but he's struggling because of the uh, lack of a. Uh, of a, of a major donor at this point in the, in the campaign, although I'm sure that'll change after the primary if he wins. 
Alicia, what do you make of the evolution in just even statewide races, seeing this much money pour into these campaigns? Um, you know, I think it's really disheartening for democracy. And when you look at what's happening, um, you know, in Russia and the Ukraine right now, and just democracy in general, um, I think, you know, Citizens United, when that opened the floodgates, um, especially at the federal level, for, for money to be spent, the amount of money that is poured into these races is just astronomical. And I often use the statistic when I ran for the Iowa legislature in 2006, my first race, I raised 250000 and I was not a targeted candidate. And you're running for a race or for a seat in Iowa, that's 25000 a year. Obviously, the governor's race has much more subsequent um, implications than a state legislative race in Iowa. However, what I will say is that we've only seen those numbers just like double and triple every election cycle um, since that time. And we've really seen no relief. And despite election after election, and people get so tired of all the advertising and so tired of all the mail pieces and just being bombarded, we still have yet to have a significant and meaningful conversation about election campaign finance reform um, happening. And it needs to happen, not just in Illinois, but in Iowa, where there's unlimited campaign contributions to state legislative candidates and other candidates, um, as well as at the federal level. And what does it mean um, for individuals to give? And what does that Citizens United ruling mean for the long-term health of our democracy? Last topic here. Talks have been ongoing for a while to possibly reestablish the Iran nuclear deal. The United States has been having conversations with European allies, Israel and Iran. One sticking point will likely keep it from happening. That's when the Trump administration listed Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard as a terrorist group when it canceled the nuclear deal. Iran won't enter any new deal unless the Revolutionary Guard is taken off that list. Now, why would the United States consider declassifying the Islamic Revolutionary Guard as a terrorist group? And what options are there at this point to keep Iran's nuclear aspirations in check? Alicia? Well, I think that this this situation only was, you know, complicated, you know, by great, great depths um, with the withdrawal of the original treaty. Um, we do have a working place in that to, to move forward. I think one of the, the, you know, after effects of everything happening in Ukraine and Russia and our collaboration with the world um, standing is having us get that influence back of being a leader um, of democracy and a, a leader where we have some you know clout but i think what also is happening in russia is also demonstrating the need to get this nuclear deal in place and um, we don't need um, a nuclear iran um, we don't need to be facing situations like we are in ukraine where you're seeing you know graphic images of human rights abuses and um crimes taking place and yet fear from our leadership to go forward in, in escalating the situation because it could lead to a nuclear war and i think the less that we can um you know have that as a threat worldwide i think the better for humanity well, i think the biden administration can see though it's likely fading bill what options are there though to keep iran's nuclear aspirations in check i think the most effective uh alternatives are probably not found at the diplomatic table i think i think our uh treaty with Iran has basically been a waste of, a study of a waste of time ever since it was started. I mean, there's no limitations on Iran developing delivery systems, including intermediate range and, and uh, intercontinental ballistic missile systems. Um, Russia is theoretically our partner in negotiations with Iran, and Russia has it in their own interest to keep Iran distracting us. Uh, they've talked to Iran about air defense systems. Um, if any any nuclear material that is removed from Iran goes to Russia, and and who's going to believe that they're going to be good stewards of uh, of nuclear weapons grade uh, uranium? Uh, I I think I think if we're going to keep Iran from getting a bomb, I don't think it's going to be through having them sign agreements. I think it will probably be through making sure that their technology fails. Bill Bloom, Alicia Gaiman, thanks for the conversation, both of you. Be safe. Now, our question of the week. What do you think about money from billionaires playing a big role in the campaigns for Democrats and Republicans running for Illinois governor? Send your answer by email to for the record at whbf.com or respond to this post on Facebook at the local 4 News WHBF-TV page or on my page.